Two main anesthesia are arterial line. This is the classic arterial line waveform. Y axis is pressure, X axis is time. Aortic valve opens, blood moves from the left ventricle into the aorta. This is the systolic upstroke identified by the DP over DT, change in pressure over change in time. The slope of the arterial upstroke is a reflection of the myocardial contractility. The highest point is the systolic pressure, and then you get the systolic decline. Aortic valve closes and you get a dichotic notch. This leads to a diastolic runoff and end diastolic pressure. The rate of decay is secondary to the peripheral vascular resistance. The pulse pressure is the difference between the systolic minus the diastolic. The area under the curve for the systolic component is a reflection of the stroke volume. This is depicted as the area under the curve to the left of the dotted line. Hypovolemia is suggested by the arterial waveform by a narrow waveform with a low dichotic notch and a peak pressure which varies with IPPV. Indications for arterial line insertion can be diagnostic or therapeutic. Therapeutic could be thrombolysis or stent. Diagnostic could be blood sampling, i.e. in ICU. Beat to beat blood pressure monitoring. Prevention of cuff complications. This could be long case in theatre where the cuff is going to go over repeatedly and the patient is at risk of nerve injury or skin damage. And difficult to measure arterial pressures, i.e. obese patients or long procedures and finally angiography. Ideal properties of an invasive pressure monitoring, flat dynamic response via a flush test, avoid resonance, equal phase shift and high signal to noise ratio. There are five main components of an intra-arterial line system. First of all, the cannula, it's usually 20 gauge. This is connected to a pressure transducer by a short, wide, stiff, non-compliant tube. The pressure transducer converts a pressure signal into electrical signal. The arterial pressure is transmitted via column of fluid to a flexible diaphragm within the pressure transducer and displaces it. The flexible diaphragm is attached to a wire strain gauge and is incorporated into a Wheatstone bridge circuit. This will be discussed next. In such a way that the movement of the diaphragm, the gauges are stretched or compressed, which alters the resistance. And then the Wheatstone bridge can determine this resistance. The signal is then passes through cables and microprocessors and is altered and amplified and analysed and expressed on a display. At the top of the system is a flushing system. This is usually 0.9% saline in a pressurised bag set 300 mm of mercury. This is not important as long as the pressure is higher than the blood pressure with a flow rate of 3 to 5 mls per hour. A flush system allows a high pressure flush of fluid through the system in order to check for dampening and natural resonance of the system and also keep the tubes patent. The Wheatstone bridge is configured to measure small variations in resistance. It's composed of two known resistors, one unknown resistor and one variable resistor. It has a central galvanometer and a power supply. The Wheatstone bridge adjusts the resistance of the variable resistor until the current detected by the galvanometer drops to zero. This occurs when the resistance of the variable resistor becomes the same as the unknown resistance. Hence, you ignore the unknown resistance. There's a range of different topics which will be covered over the next slides, which may require additional reading. The first of all is natural frequency. This is the frequency at which a system oscillates in the absence of any driving force. And this is determined for an arterial line based on the line itself and the fluid. For example, if you have a plate with jelly on and you move that plate, the jelly will then move backwards and forwards at a set rate. That will be the jelly's natural frequency. Dampening. This is any factor that reduces the energy in an oscillating system leads to a reduction in amplitude of the oscillations. And this is due to the frictional forces between the fluid and the tube within the R2 line system. This can be tested using the square wave test. So you squeeze the fast flush valve within the transducer. This causes the fluid from the pressurized bag to move through the transducer producing a square wave. It will then oscillate back to the baseline to produce the arterial line waveform. And based on the number of oscillations, this can determine the degree of dampening. So optimum would be one or two oscillations. Underdampened means the system oscillates more, so three or more oscillations before going back to baseline. And overdampened is just one oscillation. With all things in physics, we can quantify this. So you measure and compare the height of the first and second oscillation, and this gives a number. 
So optimum is 0.64, under dampened is less than 0.7, and over dampened is greater than 1. Why is dampening important? Because it affects the results we get. In the under dampened systems, there's more energy and there's a risk of overshoot, producing a higher systolic and lower diastolic blood pressure. In an over dampened system, energy is lost and it's slow to respond to change resulting in a lower systolic and a higher diastolic blood pressure. This could be due to the wrong tubing used, or kinks in the tubing, or air bubbles within the tube. The arterial waveform is a complex waveform consisting of at least eight different sine waves, or eight harmonics. Fournier's analysis is the process of analysing this complex arterial waveform and breaking it down into these each individual sine waves which have different frequencies. A range of different factors can affect the blood pressure reading. First of all, the setup, so poor cannula placement and incorrect line use. Next, measurement, so calibration, inadequate zeroing. So zeroing exposes the transducer to atmospheric pressure and calibrates the pressure to zero. Next, the transducer height. So if the transducer height is too high, this can result in a low blood pressure and conversely, low transducer can result in a high blood pressure. And finally, dampening. This could result in due to air bubbles, clots and kinks which can affect the blood pressure reading.